You're just about to launch your new album, Piano Book Number One, by Gabriel Prokofiev. Can you tell us about this album? What inspires you to play Gabriel's music? Why do you like his composition and style, and why do you enjoy playing his music? Um, well, I really like Gabriel's style because it's very um, vibrant. It's quite unique, and it has a combination of really old traditional stuff combined with a new stuff. And uh, in this particular case, I it started because I commissioned Gabriel a piece of piano music and he wrote it in a very short time, it took just three days. And then we had a rehearsal and the piece landed in my hands really well. And we were so pleased with the results, so we decided that we should work together. And he said, well, why don't I write a whole album for you? So that's how it started. And this isn't your first album that you've released with non-classical, so can you tell us about your previous recordings with them and your ongoing work and what, what has led you to record with them a number of times? Well, the first piece which we released was a piece by John Richards, a suite for piano electronics. But that's quite a funny story because uh, John wrote it for me in 2000, quite a long time, and we actually recorded and produced it. But we were looking for the right label to, to release it on. And then at that concert where Gabriel actually wrote that piece of music, um, after the concert we were just all talking, and Gabriel and John were very good friends, and we were sitting next to each other. And John suddenly said, well, why don't we release it on a classical label? And I said, well, that would be a brilliant idea. And Gabriel said, well, I would be absolutely delighted because it goes so well with the profile of the label. So that was a very spontaneous decision, but it was a very right decision because, of course, then Gabriel invited lots of remixes, very interesting dance producers, and this is how the whole collaboration has started. Excellent. And as well as performing and recording, you also teach and educate about the piano. You've created and developed piano yoga. Can you tell us a little bit about this? How did you develop it and what are its benefits? Well, piano yoga, it took a while to develop. I would say maybe now, by now it's about 10 years. And originally um, I was told when I was a student that because I have quite small hands, that um, it's better for me not to play Rachmaninoff Rhapsody on a scene by Paganini. And of course, all I wanted to do is play this Rhapsody. Um, so I managed to get myself booking with the orchestra and um, to play this piece. And then, of course, when I opened the score, I realized that it was very, very challenging for my hands. However, I was so determined to play it, so I started looking around and was trying to find the right set of exercises which would help me to stretch my hand. And although I could find separate exercises, I couldn't find one coherent course. And um, my deadline was coming soon, and I knew I had to do something. And then I thought, OK, I will have to just create the exercises myself. And then I started experimenting a lot and thinking, what can I do? How can I approach it? And at that time, I was doing a lot of yoga. And by applying principles from yoga, it's actually made really big changes in the technique. So it kind of worked for me. And then later, my students asked me for exercises and they asked me to notate them. So this is how the whole kind of system started. Excellent. And some people may not describe you as a traditional pianist, as you tended to work quite a lot with new technology, such as the electronics project with non-classical. Mm -hmm. What makes you move away from traditional repertoire sometimes, and have you always been interested in this new music? Well, I was I started being interested in in new music by chance because by accident I won this um, audition at Park Lane, Young Artist Series, and as a surprise I was given a recital of contemporary music, and at that time I wasn't into contemporary music very much, so I thought okay if I have to do the recital I really have, should put my head into it, and that's how the passion started. But um, I like working with technology. It doesn't matter to me if it's technology or not. If the music is interesting, if sounds are interesting, I like experimenting and exploring things. So if technology is part of it, then so be. Excellent. So this is exercise is called digits. So first you put your hands on the knees just to make sure that your position is correct. And then you bring hands usually on the level of your waist, but because of the camera, I'm going to bring it higher so people can see. And then what you do, you tense the bottom part of the finger, this part, which is called proximal phalanx, and first time you hold it for three seconds. So you hold it, and then you release the tension. Then you repeat it again, and you hold it for three seconds, and then you release the tension. And then you do it again on, the, on this part of the finger, and then you move to the top 
part of the finger, working on your fingertips, which is a little bit harder. After you've done this three times, you do the same with the middle part of the finger. What actually it does, it makes people um, much aware of their fingers and make them learn how to control the tension, control and release. And by doing this, as I actually, the fingers actually become much stronger. Um, I had a student who was actually a pianist, professional pianist, but he never had time to practice because he always had to teach. And he played a very difficult virtuosic piece. And once he came for a piano lesson, he said, and he played so well, I said, well, congratulations, you finally um, done your practice, I can see. He said, Jenya, honestly, I haven't had any time, but I was doing digits on a bus stop every morning. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>